I call uh, Lord Treesman. Uh, my lords, it's um, a privilege, as it always is, to follow uh, the noble lady, uh, Baroness Altman. Um, I think that she and I have two reasons to celebrate today. Uh, the first, of course, is the change that has taken place as a result of the uh, of the noble lord, the minister's statement, to which I'll return in just a second. And the second thing we celebrate is we're both from Tottenham. And uh, I think that it's one of those rare days when people from Tottenham will be celebrating as well. And I know that Baroness Altman will know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I join um, others in expressing my thanks to the minister. We have not always been on the same side of debates, but I've been uh, enormously impressed, as have other noble lords, with his, uh, not just with his willingness to listen, but to argue his case and then to uh, to come to a conclusion, which I'm sure is his conclusion, which he's urged on uh, other ministers, uh, to make this bill a better bill. And uh, I appreciate that and I thank him for it, just as I thank Lord Lucas for moving the amendment, which I fully support, uh, uh, Lord Hunt of King's Heath, um, Baroness Noakes and Baroness Nicholson, and indeed all others who've provided uh, provided not only a lot of good sense, but have provided, I think, a very educative process uh, for the House. I appreciate that a lot. A number of noble lords have been um, quite rightly appreciative of uh, Baroness uh, Barker's uh, role on all of these issues. And uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to break ranks a tiny bit uh, with Liz Barker, and I, I hope that one day, if not today, she'll forgive me. Because I think when people uh, tell you that uh, because of the sorts of things you are likely to say or the things that you have said that you're going to call them out, then it's important to know what it is you're being called out about and whether it's true. I said in the second reading debate, and I know it's true of very many colleagues across the House, that uh, we have been involved in the uh, various fights led by women's organizations, I have to say, for the extension of uh, women's rights. I deeply appreciate those who led those fights, and I'm grateful for the chance to have taken part. The same is true about uh, LGBT. I, I, I think I can't recall one of the significant campaigns that has come from that community for which I've not had 100% support. And it is also true about the rights of trans people. And so I, I'm afraid I don't accept uh, in any sense that by raising these issues, we somehow have turned our backs on that history or on the commitments which we have adhered to or we have made or that we are engaging in a grievous stereotyping. Uh, I completely accept, for example, that uh, trans women are under threat, as um, Baroness Barker said, but it is also true that other people and other groups are under threat, and I don't think we do any of them any service if we play them off one against another. Baroness Barker said that uh, we would be alarmed if we saw some of the things that have been written and said to her. So let me say, I deplore that as well. That kind of nastiness and incivility are deeply damaging to our political life and to our social life. And I deplore the fact that Liz Barker has been on the receiving end of that kind of diatribe. But I hope she will accept that when we talk about evidence, there is evidence on all sides, genuine evidence. Lord Winston made the point about some of the occasions that he has been on the receiving end. And I can confirm that uh, in some issues, um, for me in the Labour Party, the anti-Semitic abuse was at one stage completely intolerable, as I think it was to all people of, uh, of goodwill. And you don't accept that uh, that should be the uh, behavior meted out to other people. And I don't expect to be on the receiving end of it either. The truth is there is a huge amount of evidence and the most important evidence, which was referred to with, uh, I thought, great care by my noble friend, 
um, Lord Hunt of King's Heath, who's also played a huge role in this, and by the noble Baroness, Baroness Fox, that uh, what, we have, what we are seeing now is organizations and individuals having their capacity to act on behalf of people who suffer from uh, discrimination. They're having that ability stripped out by being denied the kinds of funds that historically they have had for a very long time in order to conduct that fight. That is all real evidence. It is as real as the evidence on any side of this and I'm afraid I have to say that I've also uh, uh, received a, a very large number of, uh, well, I have to say I've received a large number of very pleasant emails, but a, a significant amount of abuse on social media. The language is an issue. Getting the right language in our legislation is always an issue for reasons which I won't repeat because noble lords and ladies have made the point very, very clearly. It's urgent at the moment, not just because of this bill, but because, for example, I note that the basis on which the ONS has decided to collect data on biological sex, or rather not to collect data on biological sex in the uh, census, now means that there are a number of leading quantitative social scientists who believe that we will have both inadequate data and an inadequate track back through data historically. And we've been given almost no time to comment on the wording of the census. And yet the wording of the census, which guides so much social policy and so much of our understanding of our uh, country, and indeed should guide a great deal of our debates in, uh, in this house, uh, that will now be poorly defined and I suspect will be poorly uh, used in policy making. And I hope the minister will be able to comment on how we might rectify that problem. My Lords, I started what I said, as has every other speaker in the House, with the words, my Lords. And when the Minister replies, I suspect he will start with the words, my Lords, as well. We are in an institution which is called after the male uh, members and not after the female members. We don't raise the problem, and I'm not intending to raise it as a specific sharp problem. We don't raise the issue because for matters of historical convenience, and because we like the traditions, we uh, on occasions use language which uh, I suspect in other circumstances would be thought offensive or inappropriate. But we of all people should be extremely sensitive to the way in which the, the people of this country speak, what it is they expect from us, how they expect not to be patronized and quite rightly so, and how they expect what we do to be intelligible we should not abandon that, and that's why the language is vitally important. I thank Noble Lords for having listened uh, to what I've said. Uh, we've got a, a long way to go to get this right, but let's, uh, let's applaud the start we can make today.